live from digital address GA0992539 in Kokomimli, Accra, on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. A lovely Thursday morning to you all. The show is Joy News Interactive and our show, social media handles for Facebook, Twitter and Instagram is Joy News on TV. <laughs> I am Selinam Ampo. When the city was in deep waters, everyone was asking where our vice president was. Hashtags like hashtag over to you Baumia, hashtag ask Baumia, and even ask Nada were flying all over social media. We all wanted some clarification on the state of the economy. We all didn't have answers to them. Well, we don't have to ask much more because Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Baumia hopefully will brief Ghanaians on the state of the economy at a town hall meeting on April 3. But ahead of this meeting, some social media users are quite pessimistic about it and are saying it's an avenue for more lies to be told. Let's read some of the comments. And we have a big who says, the moment the government found it necessary to organize a program for Dr. Baumia to talk about this, it's considered failure just like Mr. Mohammed's Senchi meeting meant. Kindly sack these dysfunctional regime, please. This is a tweet from Abeku. And we have Kante who says Baumia is being judged by his own assertions. His bragging mouth has put him where he is today, and no amount of tweet can defend, or of tweet defense can save the economy. And Solo Junior says, "Vip H E Baumia to address citizens on the economy. What is he going? What's he gonna talk about? How he lost the key after arresting the city in 2017, as he claimed." Enough of his humorously lazy lectures work. And we have Morgan Joshua who says, Baumia won't go. He will give an excuse. Now he has resorted to not attending meetings because his noise and ignorance have exposed him. I believe in his second life, he won't tell this lies anymore. Baumia go and sin no more. And we have this from Tom, who says, now with this sword from India, Baumia will butcher the US dollar, chaka chaka. And we have Azuri, who says, what can he say and how many Ghanaians will believe him again? And Frimpon says, Ghanaians already know the state of the economy. Even my grandmother, who can't read and write, knows. So what are you coming to tell Ghanaians again? I think it will be April Fool. That's why it's being scheduled to April. Very interesting comments. And Adam says, Baumia has lost the opportunity to prove his critics wrong on several instances with regards to his competence or otherwise of economics. All he does is talk empty and does nothing. Interesting comments right there. But away from that, poetry is when an emotion has found its thought and the thought has found words. Those are the words of Robert Frost, not mine. In the last few years, poetry has become quite popular in Ghana. Poets like Chief Moment, Poetra Santewa, Nana Sase, among others, are inspiring a number of people with their words and have gained international recognition. As the world marks World Poetry Day today, here are some young budding poets showcasing their talents. My name is Kobe the Poet Alexis. Until we born say me. Until say me say so. Me say mo ha me na da chi mo a ma se me say me Can you call my name? Not Annie. 
Can you let me be? I'm a lady, not sugar. So you don't call me ex just after I sweeten your tea. I'm not on action to the highest bidder. So if your action is to bang and hammer, then please reverse, Mr. Carpenter. All I want to be is an expensive wife. A Rolls Royce whose owner will test drive, not just anyone who inquires for price. I am no Ludu for you to chant for sex with dice. So if you are speeding for my ties, then slow down. If your flaunting wealth and flattery words is for my ties, then slow down. May change me up. My name is Stella Bruce. Call me the misery of a man, the epitome of perfection. A bad dear Odomar Koma in his own wisdom, new man will never be complete without a woman. I am a woman with feet like gazelle. I am the one to warm and pull you down from the fiery grace of the sun after a hard day's work. My name is Evans Owusukisi. My stage name is Abutre. I am a poet. I write poetry and I can play the guitar and sing a bit. So I made the three on stage. Honey is growing on the trees of my own country, yet I will ruin the whole of my country in search of some to buy. Honey not for visible, honey not for sale, they are in high quality honey. Honey, as my love stands. Opportunity is very cheapishly in the face of the gifted man, yet he is being held back by what I put in his brain. Oh, you spirits are signed to me a my day of bed. If you are what good to back, please go to bed. Go to bed. Well, interesting, beautiful, beautiful poetry right there. We have Chief Moment, a poet and a playwright, who joins me on phone to talk about World Poetry Day. Hello, Chief Moment. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you, too. Um, let me find out from you. As a poet in Ghana, how has poetry in Ghana been for you? Well, let me always say that, first of all, poetry is very much a part of our culture and our tradition as our people. You know, the African language is a very expressive language, the way we talk, the proverbs, mm -hmm. the rhythm in our language, so much from poetry. So poetry is not easy, right? And even if we move from our traditional era, we move to, you know, if you like the modern era, we've had great people who have written good poetry. The Agito Hoos, the Awunos, the Amate, and the Kuti. So okay. we've had a rich cultural and even modern tradition of poetry. And what we see now is that more and more young people are embracing the genre because of the spoken medium. We came from an oral tradition where poetry was out there and lost in the society. And then we moved on to like a modern way of doing things where poetry was now recorded. And we're almost going back to that traditional storytelling style where poetry is not just written, it's also performed. And because of this medium of performance poetry, you find a lot of young people who are embracing it, expressing themselves. And for me, I've been, it's been exciting to witness that this journey within the last four years, how the spoken word, you know, poetry movement has evolved in Ghana. I'm very excited that I, I saw it grow. Uh, let me find out from you. Um, poetry in Ghana, do Ghanaians appreciate the craft? Well, I mean, I think that people are beginning more and more to appreciate and understand the relevance of art in our society. And of course, poetry is art. And for me, as a people, language is unique. The beauty of expression is unique, you know. So even though in other parts of the world, even in Africa, you know, in Southern Africa, and Eastern Africa, you know, poetry and art is big and you can hold big poetry shows and sell out your theaters. We haven't gotten there yet in Ghana, I mean, but we are beginning to figure that industry. We are beginning to see corporate Ghana, you know, investing mm -hmm. in getting people to perform. I mean, a couple of days ago, I did a corporate performance at the Vodafone 40 launch, right? And I've been doing stuff like that with MTN and some banks. And so right now, what we are seeing is that a lot of corporate organizations are providing the platform for poets to, you know, present their craft. And I think it's a good thing to do. What we now need to do is to move beyond just performing for corporate Ghana and having the corporate industry for supporting us to you know, do big poetry shows that can fill the theater so that our craft become commercially viable. Mm. 
L let me find out for me. Does poetry pay at all in any way? Does it pay? I mean, I, I would say that myself. I mean, I've been in poetry professionally for the past 10 years. And, wow. um, I mean, even though I do a few other things, that is really my consistent stream of income. I would however admit that my level of expenditure is, is, is low, right? I'm a young man, I'm not married, I don't have a family. So the implication of my cost. But I do understand that it, it may not be able to sustain, you know, as it were, a regular person with a family and all of that. But I'll okay. say that for the past couple of years, my main stream of income has come through, you know, poetry commissions and associated work with my poetry, you know, application talent. So I, 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 it is pain, but it's not an industry where someone suggests that I am a poet. And that's all that I've seen. I know that a couple of us myself, and I start saying, you know, we are funny, mentioned that it's still an industry that is developing how can we boost poetry or the interest of in poetry among Ghanaians yeah so you realize that all of them have been talking about one particular genre mm -hmm. which is the spoken word poetry that is you know is there but you know poetry is there you go to the other spoken word right there's a written word and you actually find a lot of young people and you know mature people who are writing that you might not necessarily know about them but they are writing and there's a vibrant writing tradition within Ghana even though yeah. I would actually that they touch conversation on poetry the world poetry i want you to just recite something little for us just to mark the day um world poetry day and so if i want to go to the land of the silent one tell them that the fire still burns at the village square where it burns boons and boons ago and so the end of modern that will mm -hmm. never die when the sky cloaks itself in uh, we lost chief moment, right? And we hope you'll be celebrating the day with some reading, writing, or watching of poetry. It's time for us to take a short breather. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Welcome back from that short break. You're still watching Joy News Interactive. Now, music gives us the opportunity to celebrate life and have fun. I can't imagine a world without music. And we all know music goes with dance. And some songs actually come with their own unique movements, like the Abin Waha dance or Daddy Lumba, the one corner dance by Patapa. But it appears some of the dances make people do weird things. There's currently the Omwada dance, which, come, which came as a result of medical strap. Omwada. Hmm. A video of some senior high school students exhibiting their dance moves has been cited on social media. And in that video, these future leaders without care in the world promiscuously dance with medical Omwada songs. Well, on Facebook, we asked, should musicians be concerned about the influence of their music on young people? And we have Eric who says, we cannot deny the fact that music can influence people, whether good or bad. But let's also not forget that the personality also counts. You can only allow yourself to be influenced by these genre of music. They understand what they are doing anyways. And Kwame Opoku says, preferences. There are different genres of music example is gospel music so you can only blame it on trend and not musicians
and chief says it's not a should they must be concerned and must be held accountable for the content they, for the content they put out there as well as the image they portray we are in africa and some behaviors and characters are considered inappropriate and that should never change because that's our culture and our identity as a people and Ali Mahama says yes they should be concerned but our parents also have to do a lot by giving their words moral training I think any morally upright person will never dance this way in public even if they will do cry and Edu Ishan says music is an aspect of entertainment and every entertainer ensures that his or her fans live happily so far as so far as music is concerned music is not an alcoholic beverage whereby authorities set age limits for it musicians shouldn't consider anyone those students are enjoying the music and environment they found themselves Nana says, sure, they should, they should, because those music, but these music badly have some influence on the young ones. And that has been the cause of all this bad thoughts in our children. And Phil says, to me, it's a problem we all must share. The musicians aren't interested in the influence. Better still, they feel like, they feel if it is a hit, and young people jump to it, then it's good for them. The students themselves should be the ones to reason more and treat these songs as dangerous to them. No moral lessons and not adding any value to their academic success, which is the very reason why they are in school. At the end, no one seems to care. Sad. Well, that's it for today on Journeys Interactive with me, Selina Ampo. Join us tomorrow for more interesting stories. Goodbye.